say it's 432, and given the fact that Commissioner Dubuque is stuck in traffic and we don't know exactly when he's going to be coming, and Mayor Fournier is not going to be joining us for a while, I am going to, if it's okay, Ms. Schwanger, are you ready? I assume she is, because she's gotten everyone in. I believe so. I, I, it's it's recording. Try. Do we have, do we have Julie? I don't see Julie on the screen. Yeah, yeah, not yet. Uh, So yes, we heard live. Um, uh, Ms. Rudd will be joining us momentarily, experiencing uh, technical technical difficulties. So okay, yeah, we just lost Commissioner Macy. Okay, she's back. <laughs> All right. Good afternoon. This is Mayor Pro Tem Pat Perouche. And I'm going to call to order the Wednesday, May 19th, 2020 special meeting of the Royal Oak City Commission uh, to continue our review and discussion of the proposed 2021-2022 budget. Uh, the first item on our agenda is a roll call. And I'm going to call you based on the way I see you on my screen. So, Commissioner Douglas. Here in Royal Oak. Commissioner Macy. Here in Royal Oak. Commissioner Hunt. Here in Detroit. Commissioner Colo. Here in Royal Oak. And apparently uh, Commissioner DeBuck will join us as soon as he gets out of stuck in traffic. And Mayor Mike Fournier is going to join us in a little bit. Uh, he's dealing with some family logistical issues and we're all familiar with that. So at this point in time, I need a motion to approve the agenda. Mission by, motion by Commissioner Colo, support by Commissioner Macy. Any discussion of the motion? Any additions to the agenda? Okay, then I will call for the vote. Commissioner Douglas? Yes. Commissioner Macy? Yes. Commissioner Hunt? Yes. Commissioner Colo? Yes. And I vote yes. So that motion is approved. The next item on our agenda is public comment. Ms. Schwanger, do we have any public comments for this meeting today? Mayor Pro Tem Perush and members of the City Commission, we had no public comment called in today. Okay, thank you very much. We will move on then to item number five, which are the special revenue funds. Uh, our book says that special revenue funds are funds that are used to record transactions in which a funding source is legally restricted for specific, specific expenditures, uh, such as roads and a whole lot of other stuff. So I will turn this over to the staff. Mr. Brake, do you want to start this off or um, should we turn it over to Ms. Rudd? It's up to you. Yeah, I do not have any formal presentation. Um, one thing that I will note that the, the questions that you brought up during Monday's session, uh, hopefully you have all received the, the email uh, clarifying that information. So what our intent is, if there's any outstanding issues that will keep track of that and, and forward that on to you uh, prior to the, the next session. So, and they've already received uh, uh, one question that has come up. So if you seek additional information, then don't hesitate to reach out to either myself or uh, Ms. Rudd. So I will now defer to Director Rudd to, uh, I know that she has a, a presentation that she's prepared to go through the remainder of the budget where we left off Monday night. All right, Ms. Rudd. Ms. Rudd, I believe you're muted. We can see the screen, but we can't hear you. 
Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're going to start with the major road fund. Um, um, it's um, immediately after the special revenue tab. And there are numerous cost centers within the major uh, street fund. Um, I am only going to go over the um, cost centers that have some material items in them. Um, so um, I'm going to skip the rest of them. There's uh, really nothing of significance in those unless you'd like me to go um, over those as well. Um, but I do not have those in the PowerPoint um, presentation. So on page 175, the major street fund traffic control cost center. <clears throat> Um, the miscellaneous contracted services includes $60,500 to replace three traffic cabinets, $45,000 for center line pavement marking, and $15,000 for a traffic study, uh, $15,000 for sign inventory maintenance, and $4,500 for mast arm traffic signal inspections. Uh, motor pool charges. Um, which are allocated to this cost center increased um, due to, um, oh, excuse me, sorry about that. Um, motor pool charges, which are allocated to this cost center based on the variable rates are increasing uh, just over $9,000 relative to the uh, 2021 estimated year end due to increased depreciation um, from uh, recently replaced uh, vehicles and equipment. Members of the City Commission and Mr. Drake, I can only see one, two, three, four of you on my screen when I when the PowerPoint is up. So if you have questions, just jump in, please, um, because I can't see a hand raised for half of you. And then on page 180, and I'm, I'm trying to keep it in uh, budget document page order so there's not too much flipping back and forth. Um, page 180 has the uh, fund summary. And um, would like to mention that I am using the State of Michigan's Act 51 estimates that they publish. Um, they're estimating for next year um, Act 51 revenue to be 5,352,000. And that's an increase of approximately 146,000 over the current year's estimate. And I um, also want to mention, I believe uh, Comm Commissioner Macy was interested um, in um, if we're budgeting for any of the marijuana tax uh, revenues. And um, this, this uh, estimate by the state uses their, um, their estimate for marijuana tax um, income as well. So um, the Recommended budget has um, budgeted $610,000 for use of fund balance. And I'm gonna use my cursor here, um, but that's okay because we do have a, a good fund balance here for uh, large um, major road projects that are coming up. As you can see in the forecast, we're um, estimating to use almost 2.4 million of fund balance next year, and that's due to increased number of uh, major road projects. And then um, each year after that, we're um, preparing to use um, anywhere from 700,000 to 1.4 million in fund balance. And as you can see here, um, by the end of the forecast, we'll be down to approximately $186,000 in fund balance. Um, the road millage um, that we've been collecting for um, probably about seven years now um, has always went into the local road fund because that's where we've needed it. We've had sufficient Act 51 revenue to handle uh, the major roads that the city had for um, improvements. So this forecast here um, does not include any of the current road millage or um, any of the assumed renewal road millage, because we do have an assumption in the, um, in the road funds that there will be um, a renewal <clears throat> when, the, when the first levy um, expires. 
There may be a need because this is very close to getting into a negative, a negative position that we may need to um, move some of the local road um, money uh, into the major road money, uh, major road fund. And that this would be the first year that we would have done that in uh, 25, 26, where I have the cursor. And then on page 182 has a list of the projects proposed for next year. Um, Crooks Road resurfacing, 13, 14 mile for 321,000. Traffic signal upgrades on Main Street and Crooks for 451,000. Main Street uh, resurfacing from Lincoln to 11 mile, 625,000. Lincoln Avenue resurfacing from Lafayette to Campbell, 650,000. Uh, the set of Boulevard resurfacing, 12 mile to Crooks, 550,000. Um, and then some um, various street joint ceiling um, around the city, 251,000. And then uh, signal upgrades, the mass arm installation, uh, $1 million for a total of over uh, $3.8 million. Ms. Red, the Crooks Road reconstruction or resurfacing is undergoing now. Is that a two-year project? Over two fiscal years, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Will the construction um, mess that is there now continue through the winter into next year? Oh. You, may not, you may not have the answer to that. No, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't okay. know if Holly's uh, in the waiting room or not. Okay. Um, we can find out that from Holly. Let's see. I'm looking here. Any other questions? I can now see most of you if I, if I okay. scroll down. I don't see Holly. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, no, I do not see Holly in the waiting room. Okay, that's not a problem. We can find it out. Okay. Um, Mr. Break. I, I, I do have a quick question if it's okay, yep. Mayor Pro Tom. Uh -huh. um, you know, looking at the objectives that we have, just in, in general for this fund, um, I'd be interested to know, and once again, a question we don't need to answer right now, if you can just put it on a list, maybe we can get back to it. But one of the objectives on page 174 is using an anti-icing solution to reduce costs of snow removal. Um, and I'd be interested to know how we're budgeting for that and what our plans are moving forward with that. Because I think that is, uh, that's one of the, the things of the future here in the city dealing with anti-icing. Um, okay. So I'd be interested to know what, um, where in the, but you know, I, I know it's in the winter maintenance fund. Um, just, I'd be more interested in that program. Is it the cost or the, um, uh, or the, the technical um, capabilities of how it works? Both. I mean, it is one of our listed objectives. So I'm, I'm happy that we're, we're spending money on it. Um, okay. I, you know, and I'd be happy to know, I would like to know a little bit more about it to begin with. And then, you know, um, the allocation, be, you know, it's, it might even, you know, I'd be happy to even spend more on that. I think that's a pretty important objective for us. Okay. Out of this uh, fund. We can find out more about, about this. Um, in the meantime, um, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Perush, can I go back to your earlier question? Yeah. Um, we did get a clarification from uh, a city engineer, uh, Donahue. She says that um, the construction on Crooks will be completed this summer. So Ms. Rudd was, was correct that it began in this current fiscal year, 2021, but going into 21-22, it won't take two years, but so during the normal construction season of this calendar year, will it be completed? Okay, that so makes sense. We will not be looking at that. I, I thought the same thing, uh, wondering, you know, would we have barrels out during the winter months and so. Yes. Okay, thank you. It's moving yeah. along well, despite the disruption and- Oh, absolutely, I would agree. It's, it's moving along really well. So it helps that it's been so dry. True. Any other questions at this point? Okay, we'll move along. Um, I, I let uh, Mr. Filipski in. I don't know if he's there. He's he's muted right now to answer the uh, anti-icing question. If he's there, 
Um, Mr. Are, are, you, are you prepared to deal with the anti-icing question at this point? Uh, sure, fire away. I'll let Mr. Commissioner Colo ask his question. Okay. And I'm sorry, and I, I didn't mean to halt this. I, I'm very fine getting this through an email. Just, uh, Mr. Filipski, we have a goal and objective in the winter maintenance fund. And, you know, I've talked about this privately, too, about the anti-icing. Um, I was just wondering about, uh, you know, that, that program, that objective that you're reaching, how, how are you uh, going about that in this budget? Uh, well, largely, any kind of equipment that we would replace would be uh, upgraded to be capable to, to allow us to use salt brine. Uh, and so in that manner, increasingly use that. Um, so it's mostly tied to our equipment replacement. Equipment. Uh, also, because um, we have the equipment to produce the brine now, we just need to be able to put it in the trucks. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Kalipsky. Any other questions at this point? Okay, moving on to... Okay. Okay, um, so there are numerous cost centers that, again, that I skipped in major street fund, but uh, there are really um, um, not much of significance in uh, changes to the budget. So um, the next page would be 186, and that is the local street fund parkway maintenance. maintenance. And um, there was an item in here that I thought uh, maybe the commission would be interested in. So, um, and that is the miscellaneous contract services increasing 38,000 um, to cover a routine rain garden maintenance for the city's right of way tree replacement, um, which allows for a uh, one for one replacement um, of all trees that are removed. And then um, motor pool, Charges are increasing approximately $10,000 um, due to projected increase in utilization. Um, page 191 is the fund summary. And again, I use the um, state of Michigan revised distribution formula um, that they currently have posted um, for the act 51 revenue anticipated for the, the city and for local roads that, or excuse me, local streets is uh, 1,784,000. And again, that includes um, estimated uh, uh, tax revenues from the marijuana tax. Um, also included in the local street fund is the full maximum authorized levy that we are allowed to uh, levy, which is 2.3344 mills. And that generates approximately $6.843 million. There is um, a budgeted use of slightly over 2 million of fund balance in this fund. <clears throat> And um, uh, that's a decrease from the current fiscal year of approximately $468,000. And if you look down uh, where the cursor is here in the, in the uh, forecast, we're estimating uh, the continued use for the next couple of years um, due to uh, continuation of uh, capital uh, improvements to the roads. And then you see here, um, the addition of fund balance, but that is um, due to um, the lack of projects in the CIP right now, and it's anticipated um, that that will change. <clears throat> so um, once the CIP in those later years get beefed up, it's not anticipated that these contributions this high will be going into fund balance. <clears throat> and then also the forecast assumes a continuation of uh, the millage of renewal um, and the 10 year millage ends after fiscal year uh, 23, 24. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Mr. Rudd, I see Ms. Donahue's here. Um, I just have a quick question about, about this fund. 
um, I believe at a recent city commission meeting, we saw a report that we were evaluating the local street program to see which roads toward moving towards the end of this, um, we were going to perform and you work on. Um, so I guess my, my only question is, is, is that program fully funded or have we had to make any cuts from that? Hi, uh, we have had to make uh, changes each year as we go along just to make sure we don't exceed our budget. Um, but I haven't had to cut any streets. And in fact, we've actually added, gosh, probably seven or eight blocks um, of reconstructs that we were originally just planning to patch and kind of put a bandaid on that we actually can, we have the money to actually fully reconstruct them. So um, I'm kind of amping up our efforts in the last couple of years of uh, 2023 and 2024 uh, to make the best use of the funds that we have. That's awesome. So you don't need any additional funds into that program right now to perform what you want to do at the moment. Correct. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on local streets right now? Okay, we'll move on. Okay, and on page 194 has- Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, I'm sorry, this is the mayor. I just had a quick question. Oh, oh, um, go ahead. Just in those overall budget numbers, I mean, we're, are we including um, sustainable elements to our um, improvements that we're planning, such as, you know, permeable pavements or uh, bioswales, things of that nature. I just want to understand how that's included in the, in the budget or these projects. Sure, that's a great question. Uh, we do look to include green infrastructure where we can on road projects. Um, a lot of times that is actually funded uh, out of the water and sewer fund, and we'll kind of split the funding sources on a project. Um, depending on, you know, if it's really solving a road drainage issue, sometimes we'll, we'll bill it to the local street fund or the major road fund, depending on what the project is. But for the most part, it's usually built into the water and sewer fund. Any other questions? Okay. Page 94 has a list of the various projects for local street fund. Uh, concrete pavement, 47,000, sidewalks, a million, um, street repairs, 1.3, um, asphalt resurfacing, um, 3 million, 161, joint ceiling around the city, 90,000, diverter islands, 150,000, uh, road improvements due to water and sewer projects, 30,000, uh, road improvements due to water main construction, um, 1125 uh, road reconstruction, uh, projects for 2021, 400,000. And then uh, special assessment, Evergreen and Northwood, 60,000. Um, unimproved streets, 37,500. Um, 2022 road improvements due to water main constructions, 175,000. And um, uh, that was CAP 2210 and CAP 2211, um, similar description, uh, 300 and 17,000. Um, grand total, um, nearly uh, $6.9 million. There's no other questions in local street fund. Um, publicity is next. And that should be um, page 211 because we can skip right over public safety. We covered that on Monday. So the millage is budgeted to decrease um, from 0 0.016 to 0 0.0154, and that's based on the uh, allowable revenue that we can bring in, um, cannot exceed $50,000. Um, and we have some smaller transfers from some funds that I advertise in the Insight Magazine. Those are incre increasing from 3000 to 4,000 in order to um, keep the funds stable. And um, if you can see here, we're gonna dip into the fund balance a little bit this year we're projected, um, but 21-22, uh, it's um, right about even. Okay. 
Uh, solid waste fund. Page 214 has a significant note. Um, I have two slides here on solid waste. Um, uh, we renewed the uh, current millage, the current charter millage um, for five years back in August of 2016. The full authorized combined rate, which is the state allowable uh, millage um, plus the city charter allowable millage is 2.8132 mills. However, it's recommended to stay uh, temporarily lowered and to levy the combined rate of 2.5768 mills, which is uh, 0.2364 lower than the maximum authorized um, that we could levy. Um, there is sufficient fund balance to reduce the millage um, next year should um, the commission want to further reduce the levy. Um, the charter millage is at the exact same rate as what the levy, levy was for the current year that we're in. Um, each year of the forecast, when I flip the slide, um, assumes that the uh, charter rate remains um, at the lower rate, um, lower than the maximum authorized rate. And this is the um, final year of that authorized millage. And the forecast, again, assumes uh, that a renewal uh, occurs. Personnel costs are increasing uh, due to, um, uh, oh, sorry, that's the typical uh, newer employees going through their steps. Um, solid waste collection services expenditure line is budgeted to increase uh, 3%. And um, the solid waste disposal services are increasing $20,000. Um, and that's due to annual contractual increases for the various uh, tree removal services. And then uh, capital expenditures are budgeted at $1.8 million. And that's for the citywide residential property uh, garbage bins and $50,000 for uh, storage area screening at Waterworks Park. Also, there's a $20,000 transfer out to the um, IT department for um, this funds portion of the DPS uh, maintenance management software that they're requesting uh, through the IT department. So if you um, look at the forecast, um, what you'll see here, we're using uh, 650 thousand dollars of fund balance and that's by design because we have a healthy fund balance that's why uh, the commission kept the uh, millage rate lower than what we were authorized to levy this current year um, next year to uh, 2.259 uh, million is uh, budgeted to be used from fund balance but that includes the 1.8 million um, for the uh, citywide garbage bins <clears throat> and the $50,000 screening project. And then if you look at the forecast, it assumes the charter renewal, but levied at the lower rate. Um, so we're discounting it at about um, um, 0.2. And then you see here the use of fund balance um, each year. So um, as of now, it, it appears like the city will be able to continue to keep that um, at, a, at a lower rate rather than um, levying the maximum authorized rate. <clears throat> okay, if there's no questions, we can uh, move on to Indigent Defense Fund, which is on page 217. And there's really no um, changes anticipated for, for next year for this fund. Um, expenditures um, up a little bit, but those are just back to normal. Um, the 2021 uh, expenditures are down due to COVID. And the library fund begins on um, 
page 222 for the significant notes. Okay, so the library fund is now covering um, all the programming costs um, due to COVID um, because of the impact um, of revenue on the Friends of the Library who previously covered some of the programming budget. In total, revenues are anticipated to increase slightly over 2021. Original budget, uh, mostly due to a slight increase in property tax revenue. The budget does not anticipate any revenues for library service charges and fines uh, during 21-22 due, due to the effort the library is making to um, uh, eliminate uh, fines for the patrons as recent research shows that eliminating library uh, fines reduces barriers to access and promotes uh, social equality. Um, the library books budget is increasing $5,720 to ensure continued purchase of popular titles. The admin allocation is decreasing approximately $36,000 due to the library having a smaller percentage of overall expenditures. And then um, IT charges are increasing $7,500 um, due to the IT budget expanding next year because it was cut um, for 2021. And then motor pool charges are new for the library uh, fund um, and they're budgeted at um, $2,200 approximately to allow for uh, the library uh, to pilot a home delivery program. And the vehicle will also be used for leaf slash twig distribution and various offsite program supply transportation. Fiscal year 21-22 also includes uh, capital expenditures of $260,000 for phase two of the library renovation program. And the forecast includes, uh, also I wanna mention a future capital in 23-24, uh, because you see, if you can see my cursor here, there's a little blip here in the expenditures. That is um, for a capital project of approximately 558,000. Um, for a roof replacement. So if you look here, um, they're estimating to use about $334,000 of fund balance, which would leave them at about uh, $415,000. And even with the roof replacement, they've still got a little money left here in uh, 23, 24, about $34,000. And then a potential that that fund balance is going to uh, increase a little bit there. <clears throat> and this also forecast um, assumes a renewal of the library millage only, um, and that would begin in fiscal year 24-25. So 23-24 is the last year of the current millage. <clears throat> okay. CDBG, significant note page is 228. And this probably looks familiar, but uh, I'll just go over it uh, real quickly. Uh, $45,000 um, is budgeted to uh, support services for residents who qualify through the city's ROSES program, which is the Royal Oak Senior Essential Services Program. It's administered by the Recreation Department. This is an increase of $35,000 compared to uh, the current year. $29,000 has been allocated to support local organizations that provide homeless assistance in emergency shelter programs in the city. Um, and that uh, $29,000 is a $6,000 uh, decrease from the current year. Housing rehab loans are decreasing $95,000 um, due to a reallocation of funding to the capital improvement projects. And those projects include uh, Franklin Park improvements at $475,000. And then Delamere Boulevard resurfacing improvements of $350,000. I have a question, Ms. Rudd. I'm sorry, uh, Mayor, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. 
We're right ahead, Commissioner Foley. Thank you, ma'am. Um, and uh, I guess this is for Ms. Rudd and Ms. Donahue. Um, looking at the $95,000 reduction in the uh, rehab loans, uh, I see a significant portion of that's going to the Delmer Boulevard resurfacing project, which we all unanimously voted for a couple of weeks ago. I, I think when we first looked at this budget, um, the idea was we're turning everything into green space, although now it is going into the licensing agreement with the individual lot owners and property owners, and we're repaving that. Could portions of is are portions of that licensing be? Um, could they offset that so we could put maybe some of that ninety five thousand back into these rehab loans? Does does the does that question make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And actually, now that we kind of know how we're building this project, um, I don't think we're planning to do any CDBG funding for it because. The funding source for all the pull-off parking will be the private property owners um, and doing a CDBG project and construction is like a lot of extra work and kind of hassle uh, for a very small amount of money that would actually be left over to do maybe a few trees or some grass so I think we're going to have the local road fund absorb any of that type of work that we can fit in and then free up that CDBG money I don't really know what the plan is for it but um, I won't be using it for Delamere. Does that make sense? It does. Thank you. So I guess that's on to the planning and finance and city manager's office. Figure that next one out. That um, Joe Murphy of planning is the one who's in charge of the CDBG funds. So if there's going to be some reallocations, um, it'll first, I think, come through the rehab board for consideration of the options. And then once they make a decision, then it will go back to the city commission. Um, but it is Joseph Murphy in planning who's in charge of that particular issue. So I'm sure we'll be hearing more from him about what plans he might have for the $350,000 if it's not going to Bellamere. There's a long list of parks that perhaps are, not a long list, but there is a list of parks that might be eligible for some funding as well. So I don't know necessarily that we could get it done in this calendar year or this season, um, but there are other parks out there on the list of, of potential funding. Um, projects. And this is a use it or lose it type of fund, correct? I believe it is, yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions on CDBG? Okay. Okay, uh, page 235. is the state construction code. Uh, revenues are decreasing um, relative to the current year um, due to conservative budgeting um, that we um, always do for this fund. It's very um, cyclical and um, really unpredictable based on um, economic conditions. So um, uh, again, that is a conservative estimate for next year. Um, personnel costs are increasing um, due to the anticipated uh, filling of three vacancies that have been uh, unfilled for quite a while. Um, trying to recruit uh, qualified candidates has been a challenge. Um, so that's why you see a significant um, increase uh, there in the budget um, relative to the 2021 estimated year end actuals. Um, office equipment in furniture and safety clothing and gear are increasing 3,000 and 3,500 respectively. Um, and that's into, again, um, due to the anticipated um, increase in utilization due to filling of the three vacancies. Um, printing and document, document duplicating is increasing $15,000 due to anticipated increase in uh, scanning rather than oops, saving the paper files. And telephone services are increasing $4,300 due to uh, recent historical um, actuals. And then uh, training and education and dues and memberships are increasing 5,000 and 4,000 respectively. Um, and again, that's due to um, thinking there's going to be uh, the three additional uh, employees. Motor pool. Rental charges are increasing $18,550. 
and that's due to the depreciation uh, catch up program. Um, and information services are increasing almost $6,000 um, due to IT's uh, increased budget. $60,000 is budgeted for or in the contracted services account to conduct a comprehensive evaluation of the city's uh, development approval and permit process, um, such as but not limited to rezonings, special use approvals, building permits, uh, plan checks, development approval, inspection, and enforcement processes established by the city. And if you look down into the summary table of revenues, expenditures, and fund balance, we're estimating uh, use of fund balance of uh, $224,000 $224, next year, um, but that fund can afford it. And um, the forecast assumes um, a small usage of fund balance uh, throughout the entire forecast. But again, um, the fund balance can't afford that. <clears throat> um, we can move on to the senior citizens fund if there's no questions or comments. That significant note page is 243. <clears throat> Personnel costs are increasing due to having a full-time position um, established for the entire year. Um, as uh, the current year, it was only established for um, part of the year. Um, overall temporary wages are increasing approximately $25,000 due to having uh, reduced staff during the current year due to the, the pandemic. And it is anticipated that uh, full staffing will be needed uh, for next year. And that includes filling a part-time clerk in Rose's aid position once the senior center um, opens uh, to full programming and, and activities resume. Uh, $1,000 has been budgeted for supplies related to aging in place task force. Program supplies are budgeted at $30,000, which includes food purchases and supplies uh, used during the year, this increase of $24,000 relative to the current year um, is due to um, the uh, kitchen renovations um, and the kitchen being down um, in the current uh, fiscal year. <clears throat> Ms., uh, Madam Pro Tem, I have a question for Ms. Rudd. Yes, Commissioner Douglas. Uh, thank you. Um, what are the, Ms. Rudd, I, I mean, I, I know there are, there are fees that people pay for classes and so on and so forth, um, but what are the sources of revenue for this fund? I can tell you, travel is a big one. I'm going to uh, actually pull up the uh, account on it and I will read those to you. Um, but yeah, travel is a significant revenue source, but there is an off, um, offsetting expenditure um, for the travel expense. But um, okay, so um, senior activities revenue is approximately thirty-three thousand dollars. Senior travel is ninety thousand. Um, senior dance revenue thirty-five hundred. Uh, class, senior classes is $35,000. Um, rental for, of the facility is $48,000. And then there's about $2,000 in donations. And then um, for 21-22, for the transfer from the general fund is a half a million dollars. So in many ways, it operates like an enterprise fund. Um, with the exception of a significant transfer. Right. Yeah. So, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions about this fund? Commissioner Colo. Thank you, Madam Mayor Pro Tom. Um, I guess this is a question partly for Commissioner Douglas. Um, I see that $1,000 has been budgeted for supplies for the Aging in Place Task Force. Um, I guess my, my question is, I know that the aging in place 
for task force has needed some assistance for a while is uh is there a budget here that reflects that uh, yeah, the city manager has pinky sworn to me that his new assistant, uh, one of her primary re assignments or uh, responsibilities is going to be providing staffing for the aging in place task force, which is the, the crucial role for us. Um, the budget of $1,000 is mainly for, you know, coffee and cookies for the many work group meetings that we're going to have along the way. Um, I would expect in a subsequent year, and we may have some um, publications and maybe like AV expenses as we uh, publish our results and share them publicly. Um, but really in terms of cash outflow, I mean, we, we don't really need a lot of money. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Brake. As my five-year-old will tell you, if uh, you break a pinky promise, your pinky falls off. So, you know, good luck. <laughs> Heard it here first. Do we all get a cookie budget? That would be nice. <laughs> Any other questions about senior citizens? Uh, I don't see any other hands. Okay. If, yeah, sorry about that. I got a little more. Um, um, so the transfer out from the general fund increased for next for 21-22 by um, approximately $197,000 up to the, the um, half, a, half a million. Um, and um, it's estimated in this forecast by the last year that the general fund might be contributing as much as 575,000. <clears throat> okay, um, the animal shelter fund, significant note is on page 248. So, um, we mentioned this um, on Monday night, but there is a, um, on the general fund ex, um, transfer outside, um, I'll just mention it again, there is a $42,000 budgeted transfer in from the general fund. Um, this is new, we haven't done this in prior years, but the reason we did it was to keep the um, animal shelter out of a negative fund balance position. Um, we cannot, bring a budget forward to you, it's illegal, um, to adopt a negative fund balance. So we kind of plug the hole with the transfer in from the general fund. Um, animal medical services and animal neutering services, spay neutering services are budgeted to decrease, excuse me, to increase 10,000 and 2,000 respectively for next year. <clears throat> Please, grants fund, significant note, is page 251. And there's not a lot going on in this fund except for um, a budget of $150,000 in operating supplies. And that's for the purchase of new defensive tactical grappling mats, a shooting simulator, and for building security upgrades. Um, police dog maintenance is budgeted at $20,000, and that's for a kennel and new equipment for the new canine. Okay, uh, the DDA fund, significant note, is on page 261. Uh, personnel costs are increasing, excuse me, decreasing um, due to uh, higher overtime in the current year for snow removal. Um, expenditures related to business development committee have decreased nearly $1.6 million relative to the 2021 original budget and are budgeted at $500,000 for next year. Um, of the 500 
$1,200 has been allocated for the development of a social district and related activities, and $300,000 has been budgeted for downtown dollars. <clears throat> Expenditures related to the promotion committee account has increased $108,000 <clears> and are budgeted at um, $688,000. And this includes spectacular for 10,000, jingle event and parade, 70,000, small business Saturday, 15,000, arts beat the 100,000, St. Patrick's Day parade, 2,000, rock and rides, 35,000, commission for the arts sponsorship, 50,000, other special events and sponsorships to be determined, 100,000, Comcast, 120,000, and public relations, um, approximately 86,000, social media content, 50,000, and media buys and social media uh, boosts, uh, 50,000. Miscellaneous contracted services decreased by approximately uh, $4 million relative to uh, 2021's original budget and are budgeted at approximately $1.8 million for 21-22, significant Expenditures in this account include $650,000 for the mass arm style traffic signal replacement. And um, this possibly might be uh, moving out of this fund. Um, we'll note there are $375,000 for downtown maintenance, $205,000 for alley improvements, $310,000 for Knowles parking lot resurfacing, 230,000 for holiday lights and 17,400 for traffic island landscaping. And contracted services are increasing $20,000 um, due to adding a new part-time contracted assistant uh, to the downtown manager position. In addition, uh, $2.1 million is being transferred to the um, Rock Capital Project for Centennial Park Approximately $100,000 of this is a contingency. Um, $737,000 is being transferred uh, to the general fund for Centennial Park debt payment and $540,000 is being contributed to the public safety fund uh, to fund extra police services in the downtown. And then $581,000 is budgeted to be transferred to auto parking to pay for a portion of the Center Street structured debt. So I have a question. Commissioner Mayke. Thank you. Um, so this is probably from Mr. Brake, I assume. So I, I, we already talked about public safety and that court debt on Monday. Uh, does this include any additional um, set aside for maintenance of the downtown park? I assume that that's going to add quite a bit to the worry-free contract if it's going to be included, which I assume it is. So I didn't you know, reading through this, I can't tell if it's hidden in one of those numbers or not, but are they anticipating an increased um, maintenance for that park? Not that I'm aware of, um, but, uh, you know, it's, I, I would say once we have the, the opening into the park and, and could discern some uh, accurate numbers, you know, we can revisit that. So, um, you know, I, I, obviously based on that change uh, until we get into it, it would, uh, in, until then, you know, best that we could do is, is come up with a very basic estimate, but, but no, it does not include anything at this point. Okay, thanks. Okay, so um, that completes the um, special revenue fund section. If there's no other comments or questions, we can move on um, into the debt service tab. And um, if you could flip to 272, I'm just gonna go over the um, fund summaries. There's three fund summaries um, in this section. And I've condensed them here on one screen. So um, there's one on 272, 274, 
and 275. But just briefly here, the, the top table is the um, fire millage debt, and that is going to be completed in 21-22. Um, so this will be the last year. And this is the, um, the debt that we have a millage on. So it's approximately um, 0.2, let's see, I've got it somewhere, a little over uh, 0.2 mil. Um, the court building debt um, expires in 23, 24, and that's 465,000 a year. And then um, the, the, the final one is the rock debt, and that's going to be going on for a while. Um, so it completes, uh, it's in all, all the years of the forecast. And that's approximately $2.2 .2 million a year. Um, the capital improvement funds. Um, We've got those um, down to only two now, uh, uh, fund 450, which is um, the construction for the rock project. Um, and this is on page 281. Um, and then also the um, park capital improvement fund is 498 a second, um, uh, the second fund here. I'm sorry, that's not the park one. The park's on the, on, the, on the next slide, sorry about that. That 498 is um, a fund we're no longer gonna be using. Um, we were doing the road projects and the water and sewer projects out of this fund. And instead, what we did a couple of years ago is we established the construction cost centers out of each one of the funds, major road funds, local road funds, and water and sewer. Um, and we are expending those capital costs out of those funds directly now. And so this is just cleaning up those old projects. So we will no longer be using um, fund 498 after fiscal year uh, 2021. And then the second slide here, page 281, has a fund 499, and that's our park improvement fund. And that just has um, the Normandy Oaks work budgeted. Um, there's no questions. The enterprise funds are next. So behind the enterprise tab, we have Arts, Beats, and Eats first. That's page 326 for the significant notes. And um, as you all know, there was no festival uh, last year, or sorry, current fiscal year. And um, there is a festival, um, at least budgeted, um, for next year, um, 2020. 2122 and um, basically at the um, almost the same level it has been in the past for revenues and expenditures. <clears throat> the recreation fund is page 331. Um, outdoor facility rentals are budgeted to increase $10,000. And most of that is due to um, the Normandy Oaks Pavilion. Um, budgets for youth enrichment, youth sports charges, and an adult enrichment program revenues are decreasing $10,000, $2,000, and $2,500, um, respectively, relative to the 2021 original budget. Um, to conservatively budget for the return of participants and allow for um, proper health and safety distancing. Um, inc interest income is decreasing $2,600 because of the use of a, a decent amount of cash in the current fiscal year because revenues were down. Um, contracted worker services is increasing $5,000 to add additional program offerings such as art classes in 21-22. Program supplies are increasing $5,000 to 
um, uh, due to the impact of COVID for the current year as there were, there were uh, numerous classes that were canceled. Um, relative to fiscal year 2021, the original budget, um, IT service charges are increasing approximately $4,000. Um, due to IT's budget increasing and admin charges are decreasing um, $12,620 due to the rec fund having a smaller overall percent of expenditures um, in 1920. Um, the estimated forecast demonstrates the sustainability with only a modest use of cash each year. However, these revenues are estimated conservatively in these funds. Um, so things um, hopefully will look a little better. Um, we just, we um, are just assuming that classes aren't going to be um, at the 100% level they were pre-COVID, um, but close to. So um, hopefully these numbers will look a little better, but there's a slight use of cash each year, um, but it's very sustainable. <clears throat> okay, the um, auto parking fund, um, page 334. Uh, fiscal year 21-22 revenues are budgeted nearly um, at the rate of actual revenues for fiscal year 18-19, which was the last full year pre-COVID, um, with a few exceptions. Um, the 11-mile road garage is budgeted to increase um, 490000 mostly due to increased utilization um, with the Henry Ford building opening, William Street lots, meters budget um, decreased to zero as um, that was the last small lot over behind the police station um, that finally closed and that's due to the construction of the Centennial Commons Park. And um, street meters are budgeted at uh, $1.7 million in revenue. Um, the transfer from the DDA is budgeted at $581,000 and to fund half of the Center Street debt payment. I have a question. Go ahead. Miss Wood, I asked this question on Monday too. Is this an uh, estimate of the parking revenue assuming the same system we have right now? Correct. Okay, thank you. And I have a question. Yes, Commissioner sure Douglas. Uh, so does these does this the anticipated revenue in uh, uh, compensate for the first two hours free that we now offer in the structures? Um, yeah, that started last fall. Yes. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see how that goes because we've really never had normal operations um, with that rate. So if, if it doesn't look like it's going to uh, reach these revenue levels, we'll have to relook at that. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. implemented during COVID, you know, the, during the pandemic. So it's kind of, um, you know, we kind of got to wait and see and make sure that that um, pans out as we hope. Um, yeah, it, for sure. Okay, yeah, thanks. Yes, yeah, we, we're gonna be watching that because we do have the, you know, the revenue covenants on the system uh, with uh, due to the two revenue bonds for the two new structures. Commissioner Colo. Thank you, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. Um, Mr. Rudd, I just have a question about the fund balance in this account, which grows substantially um, over the years here. Um, what what can we use this fund balance on? What are, What is this, I'm assuming this is restricted to something, correct? Um, <laughs> that's a good question and, and sometimes a controversial answer. So, um, uh, I hesitate to show you the enterprise tables like this because you can't look at it like governmental funds. Um, this doesn't mean it's cash. It's, it's unfortunately in these enterprise funds, they have, we use unrestricted net assets. So, um, 
uh, like for instance, um, um, what is not included in these um, expenditures are the, the principal on the bond payments. So it's a little tricky. So it is misleading. Um, if, you, if you look at this like the governmental funds, um, it, you really can't. Because this does not mean necessarily cash that we have. So um, that's kind of why I put the, um, the, the footnotes. Um, so um, really like, for, for instance, I'll give you an example. Um, in the enterprise funds, what we expend are the interest on the, on the debt payments, not the principal. Okay, because the, um, so the principal is not, the principal payment, part of the payment is not included. So we approximately have like if uh, $2.6 million in principal payments here that are not included in these expenditures. Got it. Where are the principal payments included in the budget? It's a, they're not, it's a balance sheet item. It's not, it's, it's, they're, they're an enterprise fund and it's how we have to account for it. So we only expense the interest because it's, we have to treat it like a, like a, you know, for profit. Um, I don't agree with it. If I wrote the accounting government accounting rules, I wouldn't do that because there's no, there's no use for, for, um, for governmental entities to use the accounting like this. But we have, but we have to do it. We get audited, so we have to um, account for uh, the enterprise funds like this. So. Um, yeah, I hesitate to put these in the budget um, because people do tend to think of it like the governmental funds. So yeah, if you just think of another $2.6 million coming out annually here, um, roughly, um, then you can start to kind of get an idea of what the, what the cash might look like. So $2.6 million coming out, essentially this year we're dipping into a fund balance. Next year, we're just at the fund balance. Yeah. And then it starts to grow the years thereafter. Yeah, cor correct. But again, you know, how we do the, the forecasts are we just extrapolate the 21 22 budget out. So, you know, for what that's worth, I mean, you know, other things could occur. Like with, if we have the MPS contract, um, you know, this forecast might look a little different um, and maybe a, li a, a little better. But, um, Okay, and then I, I guess my, my last question on this, and I know it's a confusing or um, a hard to explain concept, and I get it, like governmental accounting is uh, not easy. So if we do, uh, um, if we do have to go into the fund balance for this, will this come, you know, the if we need another 2.6, and this year it looks like we have just two, does that mean we'll have just over half a million coming out of a general fund to cover that? Yeah, it's my next slide here. Um, oh, thank you. No, actually, was it on this one? Um, um, thought I had it. Um, oh, no, the, oh, sorry, the DDA comments only about the, the half of the debt payment. There is um, some possibility if there is a shortfall um, that the DDA will help in um, part of the additional bond payment. Um, or an additional help on the bond payment. So um, they have that incorporated in, into one of the agreements when they um, built the structure. Um, so that is a possibility um, for assistance if we do, if we do get to that point. <clears throat> Mr. Brick, are you raising your hand? No, I am not. Okay. Just... I have a follow-up question though. Mayor Pro Tem, can I? Yes, go right ahead. So I 53% understood what you were saying about the accounting, but um, building on Commissioner Colo's question, could, could if, there, if there were money in this fund, could it be used for electric vehicle charging stations? Uh, that, are, uh, that are like, for instance, in the parking structure, right. like that? I would yeah. think so. Yeah, I don't see why oh. not either. Mm -hmm. I know, I know um, a state senator and a congressman who would be very happy if we did that. Okay. 
So, um, yeah, so in addition, um, there's about approximately $1.26 million of depreciation, which is a book entry um, that are in the expenditure line items as well. Um, so um, I know it's a lot of, there's some adding and, and subtracting there, but um, um, we're looking at the, the cash levels as we um, you know, do the cash flows. So, and to make sure that they're sufficient. Um, so um, as of now, um, we think we'll be okay. So um, yeah, just, you can't really rely on these ending unrestricted net asset numbers. Um, so if I could make this a governmental fund, um, <laughs> I would. So it'd be uh, really easy to uh, get an idea of what kind of fund balance you have, but unfortunately um, I can't. Um, personnel costs are decreasing uh, due to a slight decrease in allocation of staff, um, such as the city electrician. Um, a little uh, more of uh, their time is um, being removed from this fund. Repair to um, aging buildings and infrastructure budget includes $400,000 for concrete, fire system doors, and elevator stairwell repairs to the older Center Street garage. In addition, $100,000 for electrical upgrades for the older Center Street garage is budgeted. And uh, $490,000 is budgeted for the parking garage maintenance services, which is park right. Um, transfers out are decreasing $30,000 due to a one-time replacement of two personal electric stand-up vehicles Motor pool charges are increasing around $13,000 due to uh, the temporary, again, uh, suspension of the depreciation catch-up uh, this year. And then um, capital expenditures of this fund include $50,000 for parking meters. Um, if the MPS program uh, moves forward, um, that might not be expended. Um, we're ready to move on to farmer's market on page 342. Uh, due to uh, the stay home um, initiative and reduced capacity for indoor gatherings um, issued by the state of Michigan due to the pandemic, um, the estimated year end revenues significantly decreased. Um, the revenue loss was a result of cancellations of all public and private events at the farmer's market. Uh, over 30 market rental events were canceled in addition to the annual in-house corn roast in the Senior Health Expo and the food truck rallies. Um, there was lost advertising revenue from selling ads in the harvest guide and canceled sponsorship revenue from the loss of other in-house events. Um, in addition, the Saturday and Sunday market vendor capacity had to be reduced due to social distancing requirements, leading to a loss of rental space uh, during 2021. However, the indoor capacity being increased by the state, the budget assumes recovering most of the lost revenues as bookings for private and public rental events um, will hope to be up in 21-22. Um, contracted worker services are increasing $30,000 due to reduction um, in staffing during the current year uh, due to all the cancellations of the events in the current year. Um, information services in, is increasing $3,000 and that's due again to the IT expenditures um, increasing. Capital projects that are requested are electrical upgrades around $16,000, shop enclosure replacements, um, almost $15,000, interior wall improvements, $10,600, and asking to carry over the outdoor awning replacement at $8,000. Estimated future revenues and expense projections in the budget summary table um, shows that there are sufficient revenues to sustain, sustain 
anticipated expenses. However, this fund's unrestricted net assets are estimated um, to decline approximately uh, $300,000 in um, uh, between the two years, between uh, 21 and 22. Um, however, after uh, the market ramps back up to its full capacity um, of, of about 490 to a half a million dollars in revenue, then um, things should even out pretty well. Um, revenues equal expenditures. There is not a lot of uh, depreciation in this fund and there are no um, uh, bonds. Um, so we don't have, have a lot of uh, uh, um, uh, deductions and additions to, to mess around with in this expenditure line item. So it is a little cleaner and closer to a governmental fund for the farmer's market. <clears throat> Okay, um, so the water and sewer fund, significant note, um, begins on, oh, it's not a significant note, it's just in the narrative. On page 345, the last paragraph um, I'm going over on this slide here, um, the commodity combined water and sewer rate is budgeted to increase 1.8%. The budget incorporates SACWA's rate increase of 1.5% and Oakland County Water Resources combined sanitary and storm rate increase of about a half percent. The flat rate billing is budgeted to increase $1 per quarter from $13 to $14 for a $4 annual increase and that's recouping the city's um, billing slash admin costs. Um, and just to be clear, um, the, the reason for the increase is we're shifting some of the costs that were formerly under the commodity rate over to the flat billing rate um, to um, try to um, um, you know, put all the like type billing admin costs um, under that flat rate umbrella. Um, the fiscal year 21-22 uh, is the fourth year of the chapter 20 uh, debt millage. The millage rate that's proposed is 0.822 mills, which is a decrease from 1.0015. And that's simply because um, uh, the county debt has decreased and they haven't issued any, uh, any new debt um, and hopefully will not be. Uh, the proposed rate um, will generate approximately uh, $2.4 million uh, to pay the city's share of that chapter 20 uh, debt that was issued by the county. Um, the money used to pay the debt service uh, was collected by way of the commodity charge prior to the implementation of this millage. Uh, page 349. Um, we also moved um, the water purchases um, that we paid to SACWA um, out of the water and sewer admin cost center over to the water maintenance cost center. Again, trying to clean things up uh, just a little bit. And that's just budgetary impact that, that did not really affect the, the rates. Um, depreciation is budgeted to increase uh, $100,000, and that's due to... Um, it increased uh, capital values from water main improvements. Um, information services charge increasing 21,000. Again, uh, due to um, IT's increased budget as they uh, decreased their budget last year to make cuts due to the pandemic. $40,000 budgeted as a transfer out to the IT department and that's for the water and sewer funds portion of the DPS maintenance management system. And here, um, again, enterprise fund, so that's a little confusing, but um, in this expenditures, um, there's $3.1 million of depreciation, um, but there is a, a, how do I say this, a drain debt principal of about $2.4 million 
that isn't included. So it comes out um, that revenue is really equal expenditures and we're uh, pretty cl close to netting zero when it, when it, you want to, if you try to look at it like a governmental fund. And of course, then we just, like we always do in all the funds, just extrapolate out the 21-22 budget into these years. And we just, we look at rates every year and how we develop the rates are through on a cash basis. So we look at um, um, all our expenditures, true expenditures, meaning cash out, we throw a depreciation out and again, add in the uh, principal for uh, our debt and get more of a, a, a cash flow need. And then we set the rates accordingly. So we do that every year. So if you're looking at these numbers, you know, don't be concerned. We adjust the rates um, every, every year and we look at them. Um, slide three. Um, personnel costs in the uh, water billing area are increasing slightly, and we, and we covered this a little bit over in the Treasury Cost Center because um, we're allocating a little bit of a clerical position over to this uh, cost center and out of Treasury. Um, and then here we have postage and mailing services increasing $3,000 and printing increasing $1,000. Due to um, hoping to do some additional customer education mailings related to uh, billings, payments, and water usage. The Water Maintenance Cost Center, that's on page 354. Again, we've moved the water purchases from SACWA expenditure line item over to this one. So that's why you see uh, this, the uh, the increase, um, if you, uh, relative to, um, uh, three years or two years ago and, and prior to that, um, SACWA, again, they're increasing the rates, uh, one and a half percent. Um, also in this cost center, um, $500,000 is budgeted for the contracted services account for the private water lead related work. And then $300,000 is budgeted for service line material verification um, as needed under the SACWA contract. Page 357 is the meters cost center within the water and sewer fund. And um, this budget uh, personnel line items include the addition of a full-time DPS supervisor um, whose costs are allocated um, here and the sewer maintenance cost center. And uh, water meters and meter parts are decreasing $25,000 and workers contracted services is increasing $5,000. Due to an increase in coverage for incidentals related to uh, cross connections. Sewer maintenance cost center. Um, again, part of the new requested full time DPS supervisor is allocated here. And um, the increase is partially offset by a smaller allocation of uh, other DPS and engineering staff. Motor pool rentals are decreasing 72,000 due to decreased uh, utilization anticipated. Sewage disposal service costs are budgeted to increase um, again, half percent by the by Oakland County Water Resources Commission. Um, 600,000 is budgeted for sewer televising and route control. $75,000 budgeted for aerial flyover for the city stormwater GIS mapping program, $8,000 for a controlled burn of rain gardens. And then the tools and hardware are increasing $10,000 um, to budget um, for sewer push camera 
uh, for smaller diameter pipe inspections. And finally, slide seven. I'm sorry, Madam Mayor Pro Tem, quick question. Yes, you're And I apologize for not asking this during the CIP review, but Mr. Break, with that flyover, is that a program that we're still utilizing? Um, I, if I recall, that flyover was for a, a rate setting process, I believe is on the back burner right now, correct? Oh, you're referring to the stormwater management? Yes, sir. Yeah, so that that is still needed. Um, okay. So, correct. Any other questions? I, I have one. The mention of a controlled burn for the rain garden areas, is that something new? I don't recall us ever doing that before. I can answer that. That is uh, a new program that we'd like to try out on one rain garden. Um, the city of Ann Arbor does this all throughout their city. Um, and the idea is that our, um, all these native plants are um, fire, what is it, fire dependent, whatever, but it, burning them actually sparks new growth and it's really good for the plants and helps them to thrive even more. Um, but it's a very specialized program. Like we wouldn't just have our fire department go out and burn a rain garden. Um, you, you hire a special contractor that can plan it according to the wind conditions, the temperature, the weather, everything for the day to make sure that it goes well. So the plan was to kind of experiment on one rain garden, make sure it's good, safe, and does what it's supposed to do. Um, and if it does, that's something maybe you would plan every five years or so, you'd hit a rain garden and give it a controlled burn. Okay, that's interesting. Any other questions before we move on? Okay, we're good. Okay, um, page 360 should be our last slide for water and sewer. So um, the expenditures for capital also include a, a large sewer uh, camera to replace an aged uh, camera for $247,000. Then there's $1,500 to purchase a GPS locator for GIS mapping of the water and sewer assets. And then there's um, an additional $4.7 million for various um, sewer line projects. Um, $62,000 for a GIS, GIS database review, um, concrete paving um, due to Infrastructure replacement, 423,000. Water main improvements, Crooks Road resurfacing, uh, 197,000. Stormwater mitigation, approximately 31,000. Um, 2021 water main improvements, uh, 2,260,000. Um, 45,000 for water main improvements related to uh, road construction projects. Special assessment water main improvements, 33,000. Sewer lining improvements, 776,000. Spot sewer repairs, 600,000. And sewer and green infrastructure improvements, 300,000. Okay, if there's nothing else on water and sewer, uh, we can move to page 363, which is the ice arena fund significant note. The uh, 2021 revenues for the ice arena were significantly lower due to the pandemic. Um, that was, and there was a facility closure for a period of time. Um, revenues for 21-22 are budgeted at nearly um, the fiscal year 2021 original budget um, as programs and operations are assumed to return to nearly pre-pandemic levels. Um, interest income is projected to decrease to uh, a decrease uh, $6,250 and uh, that's due to declining rates and also um, dec declining cash in the fund. Um, last summer, um, the city spent $820,000 for um, partial roof replacement on the ice arena uh, structure. 
Um, so that really um, pretty much depleted the funds um, in that fund. Um, contractor worker services are increasing $250,000 and that's relative to 21, uh, 2021 estimated year end, um, uh, but not original budget because um, we, uh, they did um, decrease contracted services budget um, because revenues were down. So um, the referees and uh, part of suburban ICE, um, their budget decreased as the revenues decreased uh, this year. Um, motor pool rental charges are increasing $7,800 and that's due to the catch up program. IT charges are increasing $9,470. That's due to, again to IT's budget increasing. And the re only reason IT budget's increasing is because it really got cut last year due to COVID. Um, and then the capital program, um, two compressor units are budgeted at $200,000. And then padded floor mats are going to uh, be carried over from the current fiscal year to next fiscal year at $15,000. And um, I just wanna um, mention, um, we have an increase here in expenditures when we flip to this page. And that is due to um, a $135,000 capital project uh, to restore a section of the ice arena's uh, modular roof. Um, again, that's right here um, in 22-23, if you're wondering uh, what the bump is about there in expenditures. Um, the budget fund forecast uh, currently is projecting a negative unrestricted net asset for the current year. Um, again, we had the roof replacement immediately in the summer, and then we had um, you know, a, a good eight months of very poor revenue. Um, so that was a, a perfect storm there. So um, I have highlighted here in bold, a transfer in possibly from the general fund may be necessary to keep this run, fund from a deficit position. Um, we bring that final amendment uh, to the commission the last meeting in June. Um, we are watching the revenues very carefully. Um, it's close, um, but uh, we will continue to watch it for the next month and, um, and let you know if we think we uh, might need some sort of amendment. Um, but we, we cannot allow for the ending unrestricted net asset position to, um, to end in the negative at June 30th. Um, otherwise, we will have to um, uh, submit a deficit elimination plan to the state of Michigan. So. Ms. Red. Um, Commissioner Dubach first and then Commissioner Colo. Thank you, uh, Mayor Pretend person. Um, this is exactly the kind of thing we should, in theory, be able to use the ARP funds for, right, to fill this kind of gap. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I, I would say so too for, for lost revenues when you compare it to the prior year. Yeah. Right. I mean, we know it was the impact of the pandemic, which is why people stopped coming to the ice arena. So it feels right. like we're, we're connecting there. Yeah, we're waiting for those uh, guidelines. Um, you know, they do specify utilities, and, and hopefully they don't mean enterprise funds. Um, but um, that certainly will be a, a relief if we can, um, in addition to the uh, the parking structure, we lost a lot of revenue there as well. Or the parking system, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And recreation, we lost a decent amount of money. Not, not as much as in farmer's market. But. Was it in the case that we might have to make a transfer in possibly from general fund that is not currently reflect, reflected in this budget? So you're waiting to find out if that's necessary and then it's an amendment, that's what you're saying? Yeah, correct. And here's, and here's the problem. Um, let's say we don't have information about eligibility yet, you know, uh, um, with the grant, um, you know, as of, what is it, uh, June, uh, I think June 28th is our last meeting uh, for the fiscal year, that's when the budget amendment comes. Um, that transfer, let's say it comes from the general fund, um, it has to be a gift. 
Um, and, and basically, because if, if it was a loan, we would have to record it as a payable and we would be in the same position with a deficit because that loan would be a liability. Right. It wouldn't help at all. So if we say, hey, we're going to loan, you know, uh, let's say we need $100,000, we're going to loan it from the general fund to the ICE arena. We'd have to record that loan as a liability and we would still then be in the negative. So it would have to be a gift from the general fund. I just wanted to, you know, we're watching the revenues closely. Um, they're really improving, but is it going to be enough? Um, you know, um, we're, you know, we'll be able to watch it till about the first week in June when we really have to finalize, or the second week in June, the budget amendment. So, um, but we will keep you updated on that um, in June to see how it goes. Thanks. <clears throat> Uh, Commissioner Colo, you had a question? Uh, no, great minds think alike, and Commissioner DeBuck beat me to it. Okay. Anyone else have questions on ICE Arena before we move on? I don't see any hands. Okay. Okay, well, we can leave the um, enterprise funds and move into the internal service fund tab the IT department significant note is on page 370. <clears throat> so uh, personnel costs were lower in 2021 due to, an un due to an unfilled position and that position is budgeted for um, for next year so um, that's why uh, for the most part, personnel costs increase um, relative to the um, estimated a year-end 2021 figure. Computer supplies and parts are increasing $210,000 uh, to cover PC replacements that were skipped in 2021 uh, due to the cuts for the uh, COVID, COVID pandemic and uh, there were some um, other reductions as well. Uh, this budget includes also adding uh, the sale, sale device, point of sale devices at the senior center and installing Wi-Fi at Memorial Park, upgrading the firewalls at Eagle Plaza, as well as the Mark Twain dog park, increasing backup capacity for city servers and implementing a teleconferencing system in the police department's emergency operations center. Miscellaneous contracts are increasing $197,000 relative to the 2021 original budget, primarily from increases in costs of services and licensing for new technologies added to the new city hall, uh, as well as replacement software for human resources and the police department, including uh, training and policy tracking system replacements, smart boards, and the passive opti optical local area network. And there are about $480,000 worth of capital improvements. Um, what I just mentioned, we're in the operating line items. We have uh, office software and training, 48,000, GIS integration, 60,000, server network, 50,000, disaster recovery, 75,000, um, DPS workplace mobilization, approximately 30,000, excuse me, 33,000. DPS security system, 50,000. DPS Wi Fi, 10,000. Engineering plotter, 11,000. Library security system, 12,000. Uh, the DPS computerized maintenance management software, uh, 100,000. And then an upgrade to the fuel management system in the motor pool area. $30,000. And then um, here, what you see a use of about $327,000. Um, and that is pretty close. Um, uh, we got depreciation in this fund of approximately um, $89,000. And that um, we removed that from this line item here. So um, this is you know, pretty close to the cash levels. And you see, um, we're using a little bit up each year in the forecast, but um, the fund is healthy. <clears throat> okay, if 
there's uh, no comments or questions, we can move to motor pool, which uh, is on page 374 for the significant note and 375 for the uh, budget summary. And as you've heard numerous times, um, we're going to implement again the catch up program. So um, revenue is included in the, this fund for that um, uh, resuming that program, which would be the third year. And that's uh, just over $400,000 um, extra. And um, just as a reminder, we are going to do that over 10 years because we were short. Um, we believe about $4 million um, in funds for future replacement because many years ago, um, uh, they took, when times were bad, I'm assuming, they took a vacation from uh, collecting depreciation for the replacement vehicles. Um, So uh, the revenue um, from gas charges to the Royal Oak School District is budgeted to increase around $25,000. And that was down last year, that's why. Um, again, because of the pandemic. Uh, a decrease of approximately $120,000 um, in revenue is attributed to insurance settlements and refunds and gain on sale of fixed assets, uh, which we don't budget for. We, I anticipate that we are going to have some revenue, but that is um, such an uncertain um, line item for revenue. Um, I don't normally budget it. And um, basically what ends up coming in um, is, is just extra. Um, additionally, there were uh, $397,000 in transfers in from other funds in uh, 2021. Um, for uh, the purchase of um, new replacement equipment. Um, and uh, that is, I believe, going down to zero, I think. Oh, I don't have the rest of the note on there. Um, so this is an, um, an, enter or excuse me, an internal service fund, which is accounted for like an enterprise fund. Um, so um, we, removed depreciation out of this line item. So again, it looks more like uh, cash, like on a cash basis or a governmental um, fund. And um, we're anticipating to use about $396,000 because we removed um, uh, $1.3 million worth of depreciation out of the expense line item. <clears throat> And then on the expenditure side for this fund, um, personnel is increasing um, due to the, the typical reason we give you for the uh, possibility for uh, merit increases, but also um, there was an unfilled position um, this year and we're assuming that gets filled um, in 21-22. Uh, collision and damage repair services are increasing uh, $12,000 to uh, better reflect um, what the historical uh, expenditures have been. Um, miscellaneous building repairs and maintenance are increasing uh, $4,000 for electrical plant, electrical panel replacement, and the budget for trees, shrubs, and plantings are increasing $1,000 for facility uh, landscape improvements. Um, and that would be the DPS building. Um, training and education costs are decreasing 3,500 um, due to changing needs for the various uh, staff training. And then um, capital projects include $90,000 to install the dedicated charging infrastructure in preparation of converting some of the city's vehicle fleet to full electric vehicles. And then uh, finally, the motor pool um, capital costs total uh, $2,160,000. And that includes um, a street sweeper for $48,000, um, a maintenance truck for building 
$44,000. A fire pickup truck for the fire department, $43,000. Um, a replacement pumper for $720,000. A replacement ambulance for $250,000. The highway department is getting a new skid steer loader for $151,000. And then for Inspections division, there's uh, three SUVs to be replaced for $132,000. Um, a rotary motor mower for $57,000. Uh, parks tractor for $37,000. A gator for $30,000. Police vehicles, 10 SUVs for $481,000. Um, a re regular uh, vehicle for $35,000. A sewer department pickup truck for $37,000, a van for $48,000, water maintenance division, um, a light tower for approximately $19,000, and a replacement van for $27,600. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Colo, you have a question? Thank you, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. Um, and I, I guess it's kind of a philosophical question here. You know, we're we're upgrading, uh, we have the 90,000 budgeted here to upgrade the city for electrical vehicles uh, next, you know, June of this year, so we can buy electrical vehicles, vehicles next year. Um, you know, Mr. Drake and uh, whomever else might be able to answer this, is there maybe a strategy here to put off some, buying some of these vehicles, maybe the small SUVs that the inspection department uses, um, maybe a pickup truck. I saw someone in Dearborn driving around a really cool pickup truck that's gonna be all electric the other day that will be out next year. So I wonder if there's potentially a uh, strategy here to pit off some of these expenditures so that, it, you know, if, if these vehicles are still able to be used, maybe put this off and buy them next year so we can utilize the infrastructure. And I'm, I'm interested in your comments. Yeah, we're, we're certainly taking a look at that. I, I, I think the, the first thing is having the charging station because we don't want to get the vehicles and not have the ability to so there's some modifications that we'd have to make even to the building and parking lot here, but but we've had some uh, preliminary internal discussions uh, about that, and and I'm, I'm certainly interested in pursuing that. I would be, and you know, newer vehicles, meaning like pickup trucks, are very very new in the market. Um, I I would be a little hesitant to jump on those so quickly, um, but but certainly the the others, kind of the light duty sort of. Um, um, uh, crossover SUV type of vehicles. It's, I, I, th I think that's something that we should explore. And, and so, um, um, so it's, it, it's going to be an evolution and, and that, that conversation has begun. Okay, yeah, and I was definitely, I was being a little tongue in cheek about that, uh, that pickup. Okay, truck, right. but, yeah. um, I, I would be interested though, you know, um, even potentially leaving it in the budget, but then maybe not purchasing it right away. So we could see if there's a process here where we, uh, you know, look at buying an electric car instead of these that exist right now? Um, that could be a possibility. You know, it's, I don't want to speak for uh, uh, Director Polipsky that could talk about what, you know, how they evaluate cars that are ready to be, you know, replaced and sell and, and they get sent to the state purchasing program. So there's, there's some variables that we have to, to take into consideration. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's becoming much more common in fleet type of vehicles and um, certainly, um, you know, it's, uh, to pursue that. You know, the other thing is probably from the, the motor pool perspective is that we are able to provide, if, if there's maintenance that can be provided by the mechanics or, if, you know, if we're, we have to consider that side of things of, you know, once we get the vehicles, we have to have the capacity to be able to take care of them. So there's this, it's more than just saying, yeah, let's purchase it, but, uh, you know, kind of thinking through the whole thought process. Mr. Kalipsky, I see that you're still here. Do you have anything to add? I'm not, I don't want to put you on the spot, but. No, no, that's fine. I want to make sure I understand um, Commissioner Colo's question. So you were suggesting, um, do you restate it just as, Briefly, so I make sure I'm answering the correct. Yeah, I'm uh, sorry about that. No, I was just asking if there's some of these lighter vehicles, um, particularly maybe the three small SUVs that, SUVs that inspection uses, you know, those four escapes, those smaller vehicles that um, I, I don't know what the car that the police department, if it's, a, I'm sure, a cruiser, no, but if, if there are smaller vehicles that we plan on purchasing this year, should those be put off perhaps one year 
um, while we install these charging stations and determine if these smaller vehicles that, you know, vehicles, tested vehicles on market now would be good for our, you know, um, our motor pool. Yeah, so I, I understand what you're saying now. And actually we're sort of on that track as it looks this year for the vehicle replacement fund, we do have, we do intend to replace two of the vehicles with electric vehicles, assuming we can get this infrastructure installed first. So I think you were talking about kind of like a two year deal, right? First the infrastructure and then the- Yeah, I, I, I didn't want to buy gas vehicles if we are going that way, but it, yeah. it sounds no, like we you have, have a plan in place. Yeah, we're doing it in a very phased way and where it's applicable for, for the appropriate vehicle. But as far as next budget year, the intention is not only to have infrastructure, but have a couple of these uh, out rolling around the streets. So. Does that answer? Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions about the motor pool fund? Okay, Julie. Okay, on page 380. Um, this is our healthcare self-insured fund. Um, our Blue Cross illustrative rates are budgeted to remain relatively flat for employees and retirees with Blue, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield. The HAP program, which is fully insured, um, we expend that out of here as well, even though it's a self-insurance fund. There's not too many uh, retirees in the HAP program, um, probably maybe 40 out of 400, um, uh, that rate is increasing 3%. Um, the, Blue, the Blue Cross Blue Shield stop rate is increasing uh, 9%. Uh, you can uh, get rid of that zero that's in your book um, right behind the nine. Um, the, Blue, the Blue Cross administration fee is increasing 1%. And um, just want to mention approximately 60% of the medical budget um, is for retiree coverage. Um, $15,000 is budgeted for the Health and Wellness Committee uh, Future Initiatives, and $225,000 is budgeted for our collaborative uh, health centers. <clears throat> and you see there's um, basically a small use of fund balance um, here, about $200,000, and then that just um, uh, rolls on to uh, future years. And of course, we just, um, again, extrapolate off the 21, 22 uh, budget column for those future years. <clears throat> so there is uh, a fiduciary tabs or tab section. And um, there are two trusts. Uh, behind that, uh, the first one, the retirement trust, which is the pension trust. Um, as of our last actuarial report, I'm sorry, that's page uh, 386. Um, um, as of June 30th, 2020, we had um, our last actuarial report uh, performed as of that date taking um, asset values and liability values, um, again, as of June 30th. And that report tells us what we're supposed to uh, contribute to the pension trust as of July 1, 2021. And that contribution um, was determined at uh, $8,615,365. Um, I will say the, um, that's an increase of $356,000 from the prior year. Um, we have budgeted the full ARC, which is required. Um, that R means uh, required, annual required contribution. Um, we, we do budget slightly higher, um, just in the event um, that we have a vacancy or something like that. We want to make sure we at least hit that 8.6 million um, uh, threshold. So we do budget slight, just slightly higher than that. And um, you can just ignore <laughs> this table. It's kind of uh, um, put together based on assumptions. The assumed market rate of return of 7.25% that the, that the system has in the, in the pension fund. Um, you know, I simply um, utilize that for revenues. It does not mean we're gonna make that for that particular year. 
So, you know, this is just an exercise really, you know, um, it fluctuates. We could lose in a year or, you know, we could have a, you know, 18% return. So this is, um, you know, really just don't bank on this budget summary, I guess is um, what I'm trying to say. And then the full actuarial report can be found um, um, right here um, at, uh, on the city's website if you want uh, more details from the report. And then uh, the next slide is the Retiree Health Care Trust, and that's page 388. And we do um, actuarial valuations every two years um, for this uh, trust. And we happen to um, have the last one performed uh, June 30th of 2020. And um, this R is recommended. So uh, the annual recommended contribution for OPEB is um, almost $1.5 million, which is um, $557,000 increase from two years ago, what they calculated. So that's a decent increase for next year. Um, the full report is, um, again, on the city's website here. Um, um, it's indicated the pathway is indicated here. And again, I do the same thing on the revenues. I um, uh, um, calculate um, that based on um, assumed rate of return. So um, really this is just, just an exercise but, and nothing to be uh, relied upon. Ms. Rudd, or yes. Madam Mayor Pro Tem. Yes, Commissioner Polo. Yeah, and I, I'm sorry, the, just a question. The source of like that, that half million dollars, is that from the general fund? Um, is, or is this coming from a different fund? That, that um, comes across um, all funds. All funds, okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions about the healthcare trust funds? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, um, was it 6.30 that we needed to end this evening? Yes, that was the suggested um, end yeah, this great. evening, which is about, we've got about a minute left. Okay. Um, so at this point in time, I'm going to ask both you and Mr. Brake uh, where we go from here for our work session a week from tonight. Do we need that meeting? She says. I I have nothing uh, else to present. Um, I did not go over all of the significant notes, but um, probably 95% of them and the balance of them probably does not have um, anything um, material in them. So that's why I, I omitted them. Um, and another disclosure I kind of, I wanna make, um, there was on the ones that I did go over, there were in more immaterial um, notes that I, I cut for the slides in order to fit them on there. So um, I just want to make sure that you're aware on many of these, you did not see the full significant note. Um, again, the frivolous things I, I, I pulled out of for the slide presentation. <clears throat> Mr. Brake, do you have any suggestions for our meeting next Wednesday? Well, I, I would say this, um, you don't have to decide it this evening, um, but um, I, I would say by the, our regular commission meeting on Monday, if you get some thought to that, if there's topics that you want to go over collectively as a group, um, otherwise, uh, it's, you know, to have a list of, there's a few questions that have been asked, um, but, um, you know, uh, to, if you want to provide some feedback, we could just wait till the June 14th public hearing. Uh, but if there's some uh, outstanding issues that uh, we need to address or look at different scenarios or, or alike. Um, so I, I don't think we need to make a decision um, this evening. You know, we've, we've gone through a significant amount of information. So we're probably I'll, uh, have information overload. Uh, but that would be my suggestion to you that if it's not necessary, if it's something that uh, 
if you submit questions to Ms. Rudd and myself and, and we correspond back and, and there's a comfort level that we look at, um, uh, um, then, then we can forego that meeting. Um, so, but I would say, you know, we would need to decide uh, uh, pretty early in the week if we want to convene that. So we do have it scheduled at least. Um, but if it's not necessary, then, then we can cancel it. And, you know, I'll be talking to the mayor and we'll, we'll just make a judgment call based on, you know, the discussion that, that comes in. It's, it, there's no sense of having a meeting uh, for the sake of having a meeting. Okay, then perhaps what, the, what we should be doing between now and next Monday is just going over, if we're interested, uh, specific topics that we might have additional questions on or additional areas that we want to explore that we're, right. we didn't have a lot of uh, time to get into in terms of depth. And then um, maybe on Monday, have an agenda item, just making a decision as to whether or not we have a meeting on that, on that Wednesday and what the topics might be. Right. Uh, and, then, and then make a decision then based upon okay. our further analysis over the next seven days. Is everybody comfortable with that? Okay. I'm not seeing any heads shaking at all. If that is the case, then um, because we did uh, plan on um, ending this meeting at 6.30, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Is there a motion to adjourn from Commissioner Fogel, supported by Commissioner DeBuck? Any discussion on that motion? I will note for members of the public that if we do have that meeting uh, next Wednesday, it will not start early like this one did. It will start, I believe the schedule is to start at six o'clock. Six, correct. Which is our same, which is our budget uh, meeting last Monday. So um, if there's no further discussion on the motion. I will call the roll. In the order that I see you on the screen, uh, Commissioner Douglas. Yes. Commissioner Macy. Yes. Commissioner Dubuck. Yes. Commissioner Hunt. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Colo. Yes. I will also vote yes. Uh, thank you all for joining us this evening, and uh, we'll see you probably at our next regular commission meeting, which is next Monday. And uh, have a good week, stay cool, and continue to watch the destruction downtown and uh, all the work on building up our new park. And we'll see you in a couple of days. Good night. Good night.